Good morning, Emmy girls. I'll be taking up the last poem of uh, Walt Whitman, uh, Out of the Cradle Endlessly Rocking. This poem has a different theme from uh, Crossing in Brooklyn Ferry. This is a poem which deals with a very strange kind of topic. The poem deals with the poet's, the process of his becoming a poet from a small child, how he turned into a poet. And for that, he is almost uh, declaring in the poem that to be, to become a poet, a child has to suffer. A child has to see the death. The philosophical uh, concept of death is also involved in the poem. And uh, we see two, three strong uh, figures, strong uh, images. One is the image of a mockingbird. Second one is the image of a child. Third one is the image of sea. The cradle endlessly rocking refers to the waves of the sea coming and going back, coming up and going back. The to and fro motion of the water is just like a cradle, endlessly rocking. It is never going to stop. And this refers to the process of life as well. The mockingbird is a bird that sings. And the music shuttle is, of course, uh, referring to the music of the uh, the produce uh, music music produced by the mockingbird. And uh, out of the ninth month midnight, ninth month midnight is you can see September midnight. And then he refers to he starts over uh, over the sterile sands and the fields beyond, by, where the child leaving his bed wandered alone, bareheaded, barefoot down from the showered halo up from the mystic play of shadows and uh, twining and twisting as if they were alive so he's referring to the background of the scene as such uh, the showered halo the, that is halo is the moon and showered is after immediately after probably rain and a child he's left his bed and he's wandering alone we see a quest in that child to interact with the nature right that's why you know that makes him get up in the midnight and wander alone bareheaded barefooted to feel the nature close to him and then we see in the night out from the patches of briars and blackberries from the memories of the bird that chanted to me from your memories sad brother from the fitful risings and fallings i heard and from that yellow half moon late risen and swollen as if with tears uh, here probably you know uh, the poet he is separating himself from his childhood and now that he has grown up into a full-fledged man and he's a poet he's looking back to that um, that particular night when a child when as a child you know he was wandering alone and the mem the, those memories, sad brother, from the fitful rise and fallings I heard, you know, from that, under that yellow half moon late risen and swollen as if with tears, right? The swollen half uh, yellow moon, it is, uh, it is as if swollen with tears. See, the sadness has crept in the poem. From those beginning notes of yearning and love, there in the mist, from the thousand responses of my heart never to cease, from the myriad tense aroused words, from the words stronger and more delicious than any, from such as now they start the scene revisiting. And as a flock, twittering, rising or overhead, passing, born hither or, or eludes me hurriedly. Right? So he says from the words stronger and more delicious than any and myriad tense aroused words and thousand responses and you know his, uh, his heart is revisiting the scene just like the flock of the birds twittering rising or overhead passing and he is brought to that particular spot before everything eludes him he is hurriedly brought to that spot where that spot not only in space but also in time so he is revisiting that time when he was you know uh, yet a man yet by these tears a little boy again like he is revisiting that scene and he is already feeling a passion uh, he is feeling tears in his eyes but 
and these tears you know they take him back to that time when he was a little boy again and throwing myself on the sand confronting the waves i so while he's revisiting the scene he threw himself on the sand and he's confronting the waves he's looking at the sea at the sea beach you know where he's visiting he's looking at the waves and he calls then himself i the poet chanter of pains and joys united of their here and hereafter right see the poet's definition chanter he is a is a singer and he sings about all kinds of joys and pains and then for a poet the time is immaterial he is uniter of here and hereafter even the future right we have seen the glimpse uh, of this quality of a poet in crossing brooklyn ferry also so taking all hints to use them but swiftly leaping beyond them a reminiscent sing you know swiftly taking all hints to use them all these qualities of a poet how to use but then you know he is singing of a song now a reminiscent song that is a song from the memory so starting back with the memory once been manok manok is a name of a place fine and it's a place where probably he spent time as a child when spermanok when the lilac scent was in the air and fifth month grass was growing see now that he is uh, in the month of september he remembers the month even the fifth month grass that is may uh, immediately uh, almost spring season is there grass was growing up the seashore in some briars in some bushes in some in this very seashore two feathered guests from alabama two together you now these two feathered guests are the birds from alabama from that country migrated here probably two together and their nest and four light green eggs spotted with brown so you know, a perfect family a nest they have made for themselves and in the nest four light green eggs spotted with brown are lying every day the he bird to and fro near at hand and the he bird will keep on hovering near the t- nest and the she bird crouched on her nest silent with bright eyes bright eyes is the eyes of anticipation she is guarding the eggs being close to the eggs keeping close to them and the he bird is you know keeps on hovering near to and fro near there and every day i a curious boy never too close never disturbing them cautiously peering absorbing and translating so here the poet recalls the days when he was a child and he got to know about this nest and every day he will come visit this place from a distance he will look at the nest he will look at the uh, eggs curious boy always uh, absorbing translating translating the word trans that is he the child was a poet in the making so he is trying to translate to, to to understand what is going on fine and translating also probably the sounds created by the birds and now those very sounds are translated like this you can see in the italicized uh, wording the song probably those birds are singing shine 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 pour down your warmth great sun while we bask we two together two together winds blow south or winds blow north day come white or night come black home or rivers and mountains from home singing all time minding no time while we two keep together so this song of togetherness song of anticipation and this is being sung by the birds the child at that time probably you know the curious mind of the child and the poet in the making translating that anticipation in his own words you know the feelings of the birds are translated in by him in his words so then the tragedy happens till of a sudden <clears throat> may be killed unknown to her mate one for known the she bird crouched not on the nest you know one day suddenly the he bird has come and he finds that the she bird is not crouching on the nest and she does not even return that afternoon nor the next nor ever 
appeared again. She never comes again. Now, after this, all summer in the sound of the sea, you know, summers come after May, the summer comes, and all summer in the sound of the sea and at night under the full of the moon in calmer weather, you know, the surging of the sea, flitting from briar to briar, flitting is moving from one bush to another. I saw, the child is observing the bird, I saw, I heard at intervals the remaining one, the he bird, the solitary guest from Alabama. So now he's alone, solitary, and he translates again the song of the he bird. Blow, 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 blow up sea winds along the max shore. I wait, I wait till you blow my made to me. So the, the probably the feelings of the he bird are being translated by the child as, you know, waiting anxiously and patiently for the she bird. So yes, when the stars glistened all night long on the prong of the moss scalloped stake, down almost mid, the, you know, this lone singer wondering, this is what the child kept on observing. And then he called on his mate, he polled for the meanings which I of all men knew. Yes, brother, I know. The rest might not, I have treasured every note. For more than one dimly down to the beach gliding, silent, avoiding the moonbeams, blending myself with the shadows, recalling now the obscure shapes, the echoes, the sounds and night sights after their thoughts. The white arms out in the breakers tirelessly tossing. The white arms are the waves. White arms are the waves. I with bare feet, a child and wind wafting my hair, listened long and long. What he listened to is, again, the song of the bird. It is, you know, song of the bird. I will interpret the, uh, this song. This is where the he bird seems to be calling out to the mate and expressing his uh, sense of sadness love soothes me not love so madly the sea pushes upon us with love so he is looking around he sees the sea is loving the land right and everything is going on normally but he is all alone right and then looking at the uh, far in the sky you know he's, he finds out may what is that little black thing from i see I see uh, there in the white. Loud, 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 I call to you, my love. High and clear, I shoot, uh, I shoot my voice over the waves. So the bird is calling out over the waves and land, land. He's the, the pathetic, the sad calls of the he bird to the she bird, which is not even visible right and the repeated calls so that the she bird in the night should not miss the he bird that is pathetic the child is interpreting and he's understanding he's empathizing the sadness of the he bird and he is feeling very 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 sorry for him so see is the throat or trembling throat the he bird is crying so continuously that probably his throat is now trembling trembling and then is singing songs carols of lonesome carols are songs of loneliness and then the death carols you know there is not not uh, not seeing the she bird coming back there is a death wish in the uh, he bird but then looking at the sky probably the dark patches of the moon making the he bird guess or imagine that the she bird is coming so he's calling out hither my love hither am i here right i announce myself but then he's trying to warn the she bird do not be decoyed elsewhere do do not go anywhere i'm here so you see that the this is a love song this is a song of sadness sung by the he bird uh, for the mate which is missing and in the night probably the mate should not lose the way lose its way so the continuous song is coming from the uh, from the throat of this bird but then the bird says i am sick and sorrowful and so singing uselessly right all the night now the, the hopelessness is coming in the song of the bird and oh past remembering the past happy life songs of joy but then says loved 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 you know those happy memories are there but then the sadness is there that my mate is no more with me 
and we two together no more and thus this song the sound produced by the bird it has found an interpretation in the heart of that little boy who was lying on that dark patches right he was avoiding the moonlight he is merging himself with the dark patches and he is trying to empathize with the spirit the, the, of the bird right so these notes are the translated how the child realized the sorrow of that that bird the arya singing arya is used for this song so all else continuing this you know the arya singing the song is now singing it is coming to an end probably the throat of the bird is is now not able to carry on with the song it is so torn up almost so but the rest of the world is continuing the stars are shining winds are blowing the notes of the bird continues echoing and this is what he remembers the boy ecstatic with the bare feet the waves the hair the atmosphere darling the love in the heart long pent now loose now at last chimisly burning why because the child has got an awakening the arya's meaning the ears the soul swiftly depositing you know it is they are getting swiftly deposited in the soul of the child and the child at this point he has become one with the sad bird it has become one with the tragedy and he, it has totally sympathized and empathized with that tragedy of the bird so the strange tears down the coarse cheeks rolling and here the child is filled with that sorrow that sadness felt by the bird and this starts crying the colloquy there the trio each uttering the undertone the savage mother incessantly crying to the boy's soul questions suddenly timing some drowned secret he said the boy's soul questions suddenly timing some drowned secret it is a moment of illumination a moment the boy's soul gets the, suddenly some drowned secret is revealed to the child and who is this boy this is the outsetting bard bard is a word used for poet now when he looks back he says demon or bird says said the boy's soul it is indeed toward your mate you're singing or is it really to me so the male bird is singing to the she bird who's not there but the boy is there and he's listening to everything and this is what he questions are you singing to me or to your mate because you know i who was a child and my tongue's use was sleeping you know i could not express what you were feeling now i have heard you now in a moment i know what i am for i wake listening to you empathizing with you realizing your sorrow now with your song you have awakened the poet in me now i am awake already a thousand singers a thousand songs clearer louder more sorrowful than yours a thousand wobbling echoes have started to life within me never to die this is awakening of the poet in the boy and he claims that he has already a thousand uh, you know songs already got framed in his mind so the boy has started empathizing realizing and interpreting and translating the joys and sorrows of the bird so you sing a solitary singing by yourself projecting me you know this bird becomes the poet projecting me the bird the bird is singing out loud and the song is interpreted by the poet so the poet feels it's i who is singing he says listening never more shall i cease perpetuating you never shall i never more shall i escape never more the reverberations never more the cries of my unsatisfied love be absent from me i am i will not escape uh, he's caught in that that cloud of sadness he's caught in that cloud of emotional outburst he says never again i will be away from it and never again leave me to be the peaceful child i was before what there in the night so he is not going to be the same peaceful child he has lost that innocence now he is empathizing with the world he is 
he has understood the tragedy he's understood the word what give me the clue now he's asking give me the clue what is it you know this unknown want the destiny of me right the fire the sweet hell within has been aroused but what is it is still the mystery is there give me the clue if i am to have much let me have more so this much he has understood but he wants to know the ultimate truth a word then he says i will conquer it you know he wants a clue he wants to conquer that ultimate uh, thing probably it's like a puzzle and one piece is missing and he wants to have that also subtle sent up what is it i listen you know he's listening for that clue where to answering you know are you whispering no so where to answering the sea delaying not hurrying not whispered me through the night and says list to me before day break his sensitive soul of the boy is now listening to any clue from the surroundings and then it is lisped to me the empathize so has got that hint it lisped to me which what list that is it gave him the hint the low and delicious word which word death and again death 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 hissing melodious neither like the bird nor like my aroused child's heart and then that is the word creeping then steadily to my ears and having leaving me softly all over and then he says which i do not forget but fuse the song of my dusky demon and brother who's this dusky demon and brother the bird the he bird and then he sang to me in the moonlight on pimenox grey beach with a thousand responsive songs at random my own songs awakened from that hour and with them the key the word up from the waves he yeah. so he this is the strong and delicious word death which creeping up to my feet you know the sea whispered to me that day and that is how he understood the life itself understanding of that one word made him a poet and empathize it made him prepared now to empathize with any emotional soul this one word this tragic frame of mind this understanding the ultimate reality of the life has awakened a thousand songs within him and this is what he goes on to make i have tried to make out the poem in some comprehensive notes the poem was written in 1859 and it describes a young boy's awakening as a poet his being mentored by nature and his own maturing consciousness right so this is a poem of reminiscence with the poet poet claims right in the beginning and then at a crisis in his adult life he looks back to that incident and the structure of the poem you know it is because an arya it's a musical poem arya is a musical uh, poem so this is particularly it's a opera, opera. arya is a song which is sung in opera right and whitman probably loved opera so he has woven this poem this arya in the poem itself and then uh, the form of course it is loose in uh, form like other free verses it is like that except you know there are some sections which uh, uh, transcript which which called out to the bird right they are they have that music while their word phrases are being repeated then we have it is uh, of course because it is having use a uh, good use of image and symbol so images and symbols so it is one of his great poems the title itself you know out of the cradle uh, endlessly rocking cradle means birth cradle is for a newborn child isn't it a small child or infant so title itself is a symbolic of birth the sun and moon are there referred in the point the land and the sea stars and the sea waves and the all these contribute to the atmosphere and symbolic scenery in the poem and the image also deepens the effect of emotions in the poem the bird song in a part of the dramatic structure poem itself is very melodious and uh, rhythmic we see it being uh, projected as an uh, aria poem is having an elegiac uh, undertone and it is thought that it is based uh, on intensely personal experience probably of the poet what that experience was that is not very 
clearly shown it is shown in symbolic way through the experience of the birds but this experience seems to be a favorite and something like a field of speculation and the poem it asserts a triumph of uh, eternal life over death the meaning of the poem is not stated explicitly you know but then imaginatively he creates a childhood experience and uh, a lad who's curious inquiring and uh, the process of this boy becoming a man and then man a poet so we see a growth of the consciousness of the poet is shown in the poem and poet as a boy he has a uh, poet that is Walt Whitman himself spent many days on spring on Pimano and we see he, he narrates one of the incidents the sea is used as a symbol sea is symbolic of the spiritual world of poetry and the whispers of the ocean symbolize death and death means it's not uh, just a monosyllabic answer but it is is part of the life it's like sea it comes and go this is what life is coming and going it rocks the cradle of life and death that is what sea is uh, me used as a symbol for so it becomes a symbol of eternity and then it is represented as a body to whom the poet reaches out asks for the advice as a sea is the mentor a guide so death is also used as a symbol because it is a very important lesson the child has learned something from the death it can be learned from an elder or through nature and now he has learned this lesson from nature itself and this realization of death is one true way to bring a maturity in an artist to bring a majority to his emotional state so this word death is the message brought to the budding poet the poet in the making by the waves of the sea death is a lesson as well because in other poems of Walt Whitman also we see death described as an ultimate tool for democracy and sympathy even in Song of Myself, there was a reference to the death. Now here in this poem, death is shown as one lesson every child must learn. Why? This lesson may be learned from, an, from nature or some elderly person. But then the realization of death will lead to a maturity, to an emotional and artistic maturity of the child. So it is one thing that will bring a maturity and it is, it is one thing that will become a mean for achieving perspective. The contemplation of death allows for one to move beyond oneself and to consider the whole. Only the understanding of death will bring an understanding of the wholeness of this universe. And that is why in the end, the bird, although functionally important in Whitman's development, it is insignificant in the face of the abstract sea, death, which is the concept he introduces. Bird is also used as a symbol because it is something of an agent. An agent which brought a transformation in the poet. It is bird's song that is translated by the child. And it has, it has resulted in metamorphosis of the poet himself. So he becomes a poet's brother. Child is also projected as an image because alone, barefoot, we see the childhood stage trying to absorb more of the nature the adult part this childhood is also image of immaturity a kind of uh, process of development so that peaceful child is no longer peaceful the child becomes that image of innocence immaturity and the adult adulthood becomes crossing over from one stage to another so the boy becomes a bard, a youth becomes a child, becomes an adult. There is also uh, music in the poem. We have talked again and again about the poem being an aria. Even Whitman calls that an aria within the poem. So the importance of music for Whitman. Bird is singing out to its mate. You know that song is already there. And poet, although it he cannot understand the word but he translates it so he translates it the music itself speaks to him the arya's meaning the ears the soul swiftly deposited it is 
the music is significant it brought, brings on the emotion the meaning so it is that music which has gone which has penetrated the soul of the child poet and he translates the melody not the words the words are not decipherable they are not clear and then in the end he is looking out at the sea and waiting for a clue clue is used uh, as a clue clue from the sea probably from the sound of the sea the clue the clue to the real to the reality to his ultimate understanding of uh, uh, everything what is happening around him and that clue is whispered to him by the sea the, the poem itself like many other poems of Walt Whitman has romantic elements it is just like Wordsworthian poet Whitman claims to take his inspiration from nature that makes it romantic and then Wordsworth was also inspired from the wordless feelings of, of the nature around him Whitman also finds an opportunity to, uh, to do the same so there is a word anthropomorphize anthropomorphize is a word that is he is able to find in the meaning uh, in the in the world around him uh, meaning the nature gives him a specific answers so nature like a child it is a tabula rasa into which the poet can project himself and he conquers it inscribes it so it may become a part of him that is always present but then it does so seems to be by his permission just like other romantic he is able to look at the nature understand it and interpret it so that is how he brings on on the romantic elements in the poem i hope you understand the poem the poem is actually a very important one because this is bringing up the basic the basic element that Walt Whitman refers to that is how he became a poet and how anyone can become a poet thank you for now girls